Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Star Fox 64. In the last part we went through what the route differences are in the game alongside doing Sector X and Ficina. And now we're moving on to the next stage, one of my least favorite in the game. Welcome to Titania. What are you doing? It's too dangerous there. I can't leave Slippy hanging. Good luck. Deploy the Landmaster! Titania has something new for us. This is the Landmaster, the Star Fox uh, crew's tank type vehicle. Control-wise, it's sort of still the R-Wing. You're still moving forward automatically. The C up and C down, still do the brake and fast forward. And you can still do tilts and rolls to help yourself move around. In fact, the rolls will still reflect bullets. They're really good for getting horizontal distance in the case you need to avoid certain hazards. The big annoyance with it is, while you don't take damage from the ground itself, I feel the aiming suffers as the Landmaster, because you're always aiming at like a good 30, 40 degree angle natively. So, aiming at things in front of you, be it having to press up to aim up at them or hold down, can feel a little awkward. You can also hover by, uh, I forget how you do that actually, but they just mentioned it, so you saw it. The hover does have a pretty short limit on it, so you can't use it too often, and even then it's only useful in a few cases anyway. But it's nice that it's there. I like the Landmaster's design, it's just that its levels are often a little bit awkward. This one especially, there's a lot of things that are out to kill you and they could do a lot of damage very quickly. I want to say... maybe... I think the two Landmaster levels in the game aren't in my top three least favorite, because the top three least favorite have reasons for being that. They're definitely near the bottom, because they're just not as interesting as I feel the R-Wing stages, or even the one other vehicle type we have in the game that only has a single stage to its name. Though that level has its own problems. Now, something that's... odd to me about Star Fox 64... And even the Star Fox franchise in general is that it's technically been rebooted three times. Because 64 is by and large a remake of Star Fox 1 that's just more in depth and not running at uh, 12 frames a second at times it feels like. And they would do that again with Star Fox Zero, which I'm still confused on why to this day. Do they just not want to go anywhere beyond command, maybe? Star Fox is definitely one of those series that... I don't want to say Nintendo ignores because it still gets references here and there, but... It's never been their biggest seller, like with my love Metroid, or just look at F-Zero for God's sake. But even those games haven't been rebooted three times, so I just can't but feel if they just don't know what they want to do with it. Not that they don't have ideas, they just don't know what they want to do if they want, uh, like if they want to take it a new direction, make a new game that's just a sequel, and they don't want to make new lore, I don't know. It, it, I feel bad for diehard Star Fox fans. You okay? Hold together just a bit further. Ah! I'm hit! Is that you, Slippy? I'll be there soon! Slippy! Come help me! Okay, so the thing holding Slippy is the boss of the stage. This is Goras. Uh, this boss... I've always fought one way. There might be other ways to fight. I'm not entirely certain. You want to aim for his arms. That is what the actual thing you can damage here is. And if you... Hit, take out the one that Slippy is on first. You'll get him out of there. And you'll also do the point where he actually reads the boss's HP, which I don't think I mentioned outright. Slippy is one of the only people that actively helps you because he shows you how much HP bosses have. Once you take care of the arms, though, you can just go straight out at the heart and it dies pretty quickly. Just watch out for the giant laser beam. Those are seldom good for your health in any game they're in. And that's it. It's 
a pretty short boss fight. It's kind of surprising given the stage itself can be pretty damaging. But hey, uh, I'll take it. Oddly Volvagia ish ending though. All aircraft report. I thought I was gonna. We're always saving your hide, Slip. I'm sure he's learned his lesson. When we get back, we'll head to Venom. And that's Titania. Uh, the stage itself, again, can be hard. Really good music, though. I've seldom mentioned the soundtrack to 64. And while it's a bit weird to hear the sound font sometimes, because it's the exact same sound font as Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time, and by that extent, I believe Majora's Mask, really good songs in here. I just wish they remixed SNES Corneria for the Corneria in this game, because that is still one of my favorite melodies in Nintendo history. And with that, we're now on to the second-to-last stage of the game, one of the two second-to-last stages in the game compared to the prior three routes. There's only two penultimate stages. So, let's go check out the... I believe this is called the Bull Station from memory, something along those lines. Uh, the name's a little bit weird because it's not a planet name and I find those hard to memorize. If you destroy the satellite, we can go straight for Venom. Be careful, Fox. I'm on it. Grimlock. Okay, guys. Destroy all barriers. Why did flying in on this thing look like I was about to celebrate Christmas? So, the Bull Satellite is a... all-range-mode stage, of course. And it's a little bit of an annoying one, because the station itself is constantly rotating. There's a core in the center you have to destroy, but before you can do that, you have to take care of the satellite towers around it, and whether or not you're going with the rotation of the stage or against it. Aiming and keeping track of where you are can be a little bit hard here. If you're going for the actual metal score here, you need to make sure you take care of the little satellite things next to the cores as well, and the towers. Speaking of medals, by the way, in order to get the medal on Titania, you need to get 150 points, and here on Bulls, you also need to get 150. By and large, that's the average you need to get. There's a couple that are lower than that, a couple that are higher, and one of them is especially ridiculous with that, but that's also a very easy level to get the medal in, in my experience. Uh, at least when you're actually gunning for it. But yeah, this level I've always found just disorienting. I've never liked it too much. Whenever I play the game, I tend to not go along this path anyway. If I'm playing the game, what I usually do is go over to Sector Y, hit up Katina, and then take level 2 from there. Uh, because level 3's levels, I think, are either too annoying to get to, or just not worth my time comparatively, and I don't like Path 1 too much, as well. These stages are generally easier. I just find the middle path the most interesting, <laughs> visually and otherwise. Hey! The force field is disappearing! Looks like we've got company! With all the towers destroyed, the core is now available and it's spawning even more enemies, so going for the metal score here isn't too bad in that regard, but the core itself has a lot of points for you to destroy, and admittedly, it's only about to get more complicated because, depending on your actions throughout the game, and if you're at this stage period, you're about to run into some old friends. Playtime is over, Star Fox. Now. Little slow in saying that, Fox. But you might notice, Wolf is alone. That's because back when I failed the mission on Ficina, I left him as the last standing member of Star Wolf before the bomb exploded. That's the kind of neat thing about this game, it remembers your actions throughout the pathway. So in the case you've already taken out certain members and levels where Star Wolf can show up, and you go to other ones, they remember that. In most cases, barring, I think, one level in particular, they tend to ignore that. With that said, in that regard, if you're going for the medal for this, you want to make sure you have every member of Star Wolf, because that's an easy 50 points, and that's a good third of the score. With that said, with just one member, it's more so just a little petty, Hey! Screw off, Star Fox! 
And uh, also, my favorite song in the game is actually the Star Wolf theme. I love Star Wolf's theme. My favorite version of it is probably the version from Smash Brawl. Even though going for that character in the subspace mode after you've beaten it is one of my least favorite experiences in Smash. Same with uh, Toon Link and Jigglypuff by that measure. Ugh. Clumsily done. Clumsily done. With that said, I want to say certain members of Star Wolf prioritize chasing down certain people. Like, I think Wolf prioritizes chasing down Fox. Uh, Pigma chases down Peppy. I want to say... Uh, Leon likes to chase down Falco, and that just leaves Andrew Oinkini with uh, Slippy. And that's the end of Star Wolf on this pathway. <laughs> Kind of anticlimactic, and they kind of got that nice setup and the nice theme, and they're the rival team, but, uh, Star Fox plot doesn't really matter now, do it? <laughs> now I think about it, the only games that really take the plot seriously are adventures with mixed results, and... Technically Command, uh, but the, the big one's Assault. Assault, I love Assault. I have really good memories of playing Assault's multiplayer with the uh, kid near me who let, who let me with name James. Good memories, good memories. Uh, I'll get to those games eventually. I think the next Star Fox game I do after this is probably gonna be uh, the official release of Star Fox 2, though. Just so I cover the original Star Fox 2 before this Star Fox 2. the Bulls Outpost. It's a simple all-range mission, but there can be a lot of enemies here. So it can be an easy one to get the medal and just be careful of that rotating. Venom, here we come. A little atmosphere one I actually really like. We actually just get thrown right into Venom without going back to the world map. And this level can be a nightmare because there are enemies everywhere. Honestly, despite it being found through the easy path, quote unquote, by going either through the entirety of the right path of levels slash path one and bolts, easy Venom is harder than hard Venom to me. <laughs> because hard Venom is also a lot shorter. At least in terms of the actual stage length. With that said, if you're going for the medal on this stage, you need to get, I believe, 200 kills. One of the... Four levels, I think, that has a score for medal over 150. The other ones being Meteo, which we'll get to next part. Uh, Area 6, and I think Zonas. There are a lot of different pathways you can take in this stage, and while I know I showed off every single pathway back in Sector X, there's so many here that require so many playthroughs of the stage that I don't really care. And unlike that, where there's a legitimate difference in the routes, because that's where the warp is and you can avoid the warp, uh, no point here, this is just a straightforward final level. One of the main reasons you also want to make sure you get as high of a hit count as you can throughout the game is I feel they slightly place, and I could be completely wrong about this because I'm not as in the know about this game as I am others, they might make the spawn rate of health refills more likely depending on your score, but I think it might honestly be only, items might only be dropped by set enemies at the same time, which sounds also like very much something this game would do. Because that's something I feel I would do in a shooter like this. this brings back memories of your dad. <laughs> you can never sure about that, Andros? Because you're just talking at me and you seem kind of scared, buddy. Jeez, Louise, what is that? That temple gives me the creep. With good reason, because now we actually have a mini-boss. Not the boss of the stage, though. This is... 
Well, let's think, say this thing's name is Golmech. It's a mecha golem that is just relentlessly being chased down by us. And it's throwing stuff at us. It's hitting the walls to make pillars jut out. Honestly, the boss itself isn't the danger here. The room is. And it's a little bit of an annoyance to hit, too, because the way this thing's HP works, you need to take down every single piece of its stone armor before you can mainly damage the body. And because of that, you have to mash a lot while also keeping an eye on what's happening around you. Don't boost through this. Use the break liberally, unlike me. And take your time. This fight is rough. I honestly think this is harder than the Path 1 final boss. Because there's just so much in your way. And not to mention, because this thing tries to use the room against you, it's very easy to lose a wing here. And well, I've covered what that does. That's just a mess of messed up momentum and control and all that. And it's nasty. Oh boy. Crowded interior. Hello. But yeah, once it's down to its last bit, you just have to shoot its head until it explodes. And at that case, you're done with this mini-boss. And there we go. I do like this thing's design, though. I like that model a lot. I'll go it along from here. Fuck! I've been waiting for you, Star Fox. Really? Because I feel like you would have been better prepared if you actually were. I feel like we kind of surprised you there, man. You know that I control the galaxy. Eh, not quite yet. We kind of need to die, and so is Corneria for that, so you're getting a little out of yourself there. It's foolish to come against me. I know you are, but what am I? Dumb, giant monkey. We got a straightforward level here. It's just avoid the lasers. There's some refill points along the way. Die just like your father. And that's just so you can take it out on that guy for just saying that. I mean, come on, that's just rude. Don't you know proper etiquette? Now, despite having a very jiggly face, Andros himself isn't too different from his fight in Star Fox 1. You need to shoot the eyes until he starts getting stunned, in which case you need to shoot the targets on his hands. His attacks can be swiped with his hands, he'll shoot lightning out of them. And I believe he also has an attack he only gets in the later half of the fight where he starts to inhale. At that point, you can either do a boost, I believe, to the side, like hugging the side of the screen to try and avoid it, or the strategy you are much more effective at doing if you have the stock of them up in any game it's in is to use a power bomb there to stun him. I like this particular version of the hands and face fight. I've always liked it because I just think it's fun to aim at the eyeballs. With that said, uh, this particular one, Star Fox is very guilty of reusing as it's in basically any game that has our wing sections moving forward. On one hand, you know, I get it, but on the other hand, can we have something original for a final boss, please? Once both hands are down is, I believe, when he starts to really try to do the sucking attack, and you can also just take out his face and reveal he's a robot that dies really quickly. Just mash the button, dodge out of the way once with a barrel roll and get to the side, and then just continue. Thank you, Falco. Only took you the entire first path to admit, you know, we're not half bad. See, it's good to compliment your friends every now and then. You don't have to be a dick about it the entire time. God. And that's the end of Path 1. And the credits do play here. But we're going to be saving that until the end of Path 3 because that's going to be the end of the game. And the credit sequence is by and large the exact same. Barring one particular detail, as we're seeing here at the very end, after the Yamauchi credits and the copyright information, we get this, because we did the bad ending.
The implication being we just destroyed a robot and Ross, not the real one, blah, blah, blah. Although I think, oddly, the implication earlier on in the series was that Andros was always a robot of some sort that he was piloting or something. I think that was the implication in the original game. It's been a while. And at the end of any given route, you are allowed, well, depending if you got a high score at least or not, you can put in your initials or whatever you want to do. I'm immature, so you're damn right... I'm not doing anything immature, I'm just putting one. That's right, because I was saying this is the first one. Right. Forgot about that. It's been a while since I recorded this footage. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part four, we're going to start back in Medio to start off path two, the middle section of levels. See you guys then.